Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Impact Academy. Uh, we have already discussed about the Mughal Empire, uh, the PDF we have seen. We have discussed about uh, various topics uh, about the political history, the art and architecture, Master Diary system, etc. etc. So, today, let us look at uh, the question and answers from the Mughal Empire. Okay. Now, if we look at uh, any topic in history or any other subject, the best approach would be first you have to go through the uh, material whatever is available and then immediately after the particular topic is completed you have to go to the practice questions uh, it can be either previous year questions or any uh, you have to solve literally hundreds if not thousands so that way you will be able to better understand the topic and when you read a textbook say for example for history if you are talking about medieval india uh, we may go for uh, Satish Chandra, medieval uh, Indian history by Satish Chandra, or for ancient history, we can go for R.S. Sharma. Uh, but it, it is very good to read the textbooks. But when you have to answer the questions in the exam, uh, this question and answer practice is the only thing that helps. Because you may learn the topic, you may learn about uh, uh, the art, art and architecture, everything. But once you start answering the questions, only then you will be able to uh, get a proper understanding and only then you will be able to attempt the questions in the exam. So, I would say this session is more important. If you have not seen uh, the uh, Mughal Empire part 1, part 2, please go through that. After finishing it, immediately uh, finish the question and answer section. Okay. So, uh, one more thing I would like to say is, don't look at these questions and say, uh, will they ask these type of questions uh, in exams these days? No, definitely not. If you look at the UPSC or APPSC, <coughs> excuse me, any uh, exam, they are not going to ask this type of question. They may or they may not. But these are the very basics. Unless you know the basics well, you will not be able to uh, eliminate when a tough question is asked. So, this is like simply put 2 plus 2 equal to 4. You may say, will they ask it in the exam? Definitely not. But only if you know 2 plus 2 is 4. Uh, with clear uh, foundation, then you will be able to answer any uh, complex question. So, please focus on the question and uh, there are um, more than 5200 questions also. So, let us complete them and uh, once you are done with the PDF, uh, with the lecture and with the question and answer section, now you will get a clear idea about the topic and you practice this multiple times, especially before the exam, then you will be able to uh, answer well and history is a very scoring subject. Uh, if you put the same effort which you put in current affairs, in current affairs out of 30 questions, you may be able to answer only 10 or 15. But in history, if you put the right kind of efforts, out of 30 questions, you can easily answer 20 to 25, if you put in that kind of efforts. So anyway, let's uh, start the session for today. <coughs> so as you can see, uh, let us in the on screen, okay. Question number 1, let's start with it. So, Humayun had to run away from India after he was defeated in the battle of, <coughs> so it was battle of Kanauj. So, we have already seen the first person, the first Mughal to establish the dynasty was Babur. Okay, after Babur, it was Humayun. Humayun was the son of Babur. We have already seen the family tree. But Humayun had uh, faced defeat from Sher Shah Suri, the Suri, Sur dynasty. And uh, it was during the battle of Kanauj. Then he fled from India to uh, the Persian uh, central Iran, uh, current day Iran, Iraq. Uh, that area. Then he uh, gathered up many alliances and again came back with an army and uh, defeated uh, Suri, Sher Shah uh, Suri and again uh, took back the kingdom. So, uh, Humyun has a break of 15 years in between his turn. Then he is followed by Akbar. So, remember that family tree and uh, it is battle of Kanaj. Next, go to, let us go to that, uh, this question. The conflict between the Mughals and the Marathas began during the reign of Aurangzeb, okay, which is very important. During the period of Jahangir, what did we say? Uh, the British came to India, Captain Hawkins and Thomas Rowe, if you remember. They have come during the reign of Jahangir and they have got a farman issued uh, to uh, trade in Surat. But of course, they did not uh, build a factory in Surat immediately. They went back and they came back. They built a temporary factory at Mosley Patnam and uh, later they built a permanent factory at Surat. So that is Jahangir and uh, tobacco was introduced in India during the period of Jahangir. That is very important. Shah Jahan, everyone knows, he built Taj Mahal and uh, all the other ports, <coughs> whatever Masjid he had built, they are all very important. Humayun uh, is famous for Battle of Kanauj and uh, other things which we have seen. 
Aurangzeb is also famous for uh, religious non tolerance. You have to remember that. He imposed zizya on uh, non Muslims and he was uh, religiously not very tolerant. And that was not very popular with the masses. Though he was very strong militarily, because he was not popular with the masses, the decline of the Mughal Empire uh, actually started during the period of Aurangzeb. Okay. So it is not just uh, this one question. When we deal with a question, we also deal it from a holistic point of view. So especially before the exams, if you go through uh, these question and answer sessions, it will help you a lot in your exams. So let us move forward to the next question. Which one of the following among the following books was authored by a lady of the Mughal royal house? Okay. So it is uh, Humayun Nama. If you look at uh, Babar Nama and Akbar Nama, okay, they are uh, what you say. Uh, Autobiographies, autobiographies written by the respective person. Okay, Akbar Nama and Babur Nama, and also other prominent uh, we've seen Abul Fazal and etc. etc. Now, Humayun Nama was written by uh, his sister. Humayun Nama was written by his sister Gulbadan Begum. Okay, it is important. In it's not there in this question, but uh, in the next question it is there. So, uh, which was the written by the lady is uh, this one. Humayun Nama. It was written by. Gulbadan Begum. Anyway, let's see the next question. So consider the following statements with respect to Humayun. Okay, Humayun Nama, the biography of Humayun was written by his sister uh, Gulbadan Begum, which is correct. So Humayun was defeated by Shah Suri in the Battle of Panoj, which we have already seen in the previous question. So that is correct. And Humayun died in 1556 when he accidentally fell from the staircase of his library, Sher Mandal, which is also correct. So hence the option is. For ABC, so remember this. Humayun Nama was written by his sister Gulbadan Begum, okay, and he was defeated by Sher Shah Suri in the Battle of Kanauj, so, and he fell from his staircase. That is fine. He, he died in 1556, okay. That is when Akbar uh, becomes uh, at a very young age of 13-14 years, he becomes the king, and his regent is Bairam Khan, okay. Akbar's regent means the caretaker is Bairam Khan. That is also very uh, frequently asked question. <clears throat> so look at the next question. Which one of the following statement is uh, incorrect with respect to Sher Shah's administration? <coughs> so Sher Shah, uh, Sher Shah, we have seen after the Humayun has lost the Battle of Kanauj and left uh, uh, the the Mughal Empire. Then Sher Shah Suri was ruling the empire for around fifteen uh, years or so. So under this, he said which one of it is incorrect? So Kasa Kail was Sher Shah's personal royal force, which is correct. Revenue. Officers were called amils, which is very important. You have to remember these names of revenue officers, you no, know, uh, and uh, military officers, the mir bakshi, bakshi, amil, etc., etc. In ancient uh, India, you have these uh, amatyas, um, senadipatis, gramikas, vishayapati, etc. That comes in ancient India. Once you come to medieval India, you have these uh, uh, the departments uh, like divaniyas, divani kohi, etc., etc., and uh, amils. And uh, Mir Bakshi, etc. So you have to keep that in mind. Sher Shah was the first ruler to introduce silver rupee, which is correct. Under his administration, the good paid customs duty uh, while traveling through four important uh, highways. Uh, actually, the statement is not very clear, but apparently that is wrong. Okay, the other three are right. So you can eliminate like that. There is something wrong in the statement. Don't worry. So consider the following statements with respect to. The Mansab rank was hereditary, which is outright wrong. If you remember in the lecture, we have seen the Mansabdari system is based on merit and not at all hereditary. And even uh, uh, the Jagirdars, uh, you can see, they need not necessarily uh, reside in the Jagir, the land which is allotted to them. But in the case of Iktadar, which we have seen during the period of Delhi Sultanate, the Iktadar had uh, he stayed in the Ikta, so he was uh, a resident of that area, and that is why he is called Iktadar. But in the case of Jagirda, there is no rule that Jagirda has to stay in that particular Jagir. So it was definitely not hereditary. Jat and Sabar we have already seen. Okay, Jat rank indicated the number of cavalrymen a person was required to uh, maintain. So that is also wrong. We have seen that Jat is the individual rank. Okay, and Sabar is the number of cavalrymen he has to maintain. So that is very important. Mansab, Mansab is the uh, ranking system, and Uh, Jat and Savar, which is very important. So Jat is the individual rank; it is not the cavalryman. That is wrong. The Chahra and Dag system was followed. Chahra is basically noting down about the person, and the Dag system is branding of the horses. So that uh, what happens is ten horses are brought in. 
again they are taken back again the same 10 are brought in like that if you repeat 10 times it will show us 100 horses so these nobles had to maintain an army by themselves so we using 10 horses they can make it into 100 horses so when you use the dark system when you already put a branding on the horse then you will not be able to repeat the same horse that way if you have to maintain 100 horses you have to maintain 100 horses anyway so next a mansabdar with 500 jat and 2000 sabar was higher in rank than a mansabdar of 300 jat so we have already seen that jat is the personal rank and that is uh, the first priority that is given so mansabdar with 500 jat is definitely higher than a mansabdar with 300 jat okay it doesn't matter how much sabar you have if the jat is high then you are uh, of a higher rank. and uh, you have we have already seen it starts from uh, 10 to 5000 uh, 5000 is for nobles and above 5000 is for people from royal blood okay we have seen we have covered all this in the uh, video lectures so first watch the video lectures and immediately answer the questions so consider the following statements related to babar babar was also known as jahiruddin muhammad yes it is correct he was related to taimur from his maternal side and chengiz khan from his father which is also correct uh, we have already seen that he is a descendant of chengiz khan himself and Chengiz Khan was at that time the most uh, powerful uh, invader. He is uh, from the Mongol region. He literally conquered uh, much of Central Asia. He was an uh, unstoppable force at that time. And also during Delhi Sultanate, if you remember the lecture of Delhi Sultanate, we have seen that Iltutmish, okay, the slave dynasty is the first dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate. And uh, uh, it was uh, the second ruler, if you remember Iltutmish, it was during his period that uh, uh, Chengiz Khan was supposed to invade India. Okay, Jalaluddin Mangabarni was the person, was the king of the Khwarizm area, who was defeated by Chengiz Khan and he comes to Iltutmish and asks for refuge. But Iltutmish refuses because he knows that if he gives refuge to Jalaluddin Mangabarni, then Chengiz Khan would uh, invade. So, uh, that comes in Delhi Sultanate, that's a very important point. Here if you see, Babur succeeded his father Umar Shaikh Mirza as the ruler of Fargana. Yes, we have already seen that Babur was a Timurid prince by that time. He was a prince of a small region. He was uh, invited by the governor of Ibrahim Lodi. Ibrahim Lodi is the last dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate. And one key point to be remembered is the Lodi dynasty is from Afghan origin. All the other Delhi Sultanates, they are from Turkish origin. The Lodi dynasty was from Afghan origin. And when it comes to Mughals, the nobility was a mix of both Turkish and Afghani. So these are some points uh, which if you remember, uh, these days, such questions are being asked where there is a little bit of analysis. So, it will help you in eliminating the options. Okay. <laughs> so, fine. All three are correct. If you go to 117, consider the following statements regarding Aurangzeb. He assumed the title of Alamgir, which means the conqueror. Okay. That is correct. He annexed Bijapur and also eliminated the Qutub Shahi dynasty of Golconda. He was uh, constantly at power. He was militarily very successful. Aurangzeb was the only orthodox and fanatic among the emperors of the Mughal dynasty. You can say so. As I have already said, if you observe, um, it starts with Firoz Shah Tughlaq. Firo, in the Tughlaq dynasty, during the Delhi Sultanate, Firoz Shah Tughlaq imposed Zizya even on Brahmins. Next, again, during the Lodi dynasty, you have Sikandar Lodi. And again, in the Mughals, you have Aurangzeb. So, you have to remember it from that point of view. Firoz Shah Tughlaq, Sikandar Lodi and Aurangzeb. These three imposed Zizya on non-Muslims and they had, uh, uh, what you say, religiously, they were religiously intolerant. Fine. Let's move ahead. <coughs> so, within about three decades after the death of, death of Aurangzeb, the Mughal Empire in India had disintegrated almost entirely, whose invasion dealt a staggering blow to the empire. It was the invasion of the Nadir Shah. Okay, remember that. So, Mughal, Mughal Empire uh, declined in phases, you can say. Uh, during the period of Aurangzeb, it has declined. And later, you have uh, the invasion of Nadir Shah, it declined. And further, uh, it was completely wiped out during the re revolt of 1857, the first war of independence of the Sepoy Mutiny of 1857. Bahadur Shah was the last Mughal emperor. Okay, Bahadur Shah II, I'm sorry. So, Bahadur, Bahadur Shah II was the last Mughal emperor. And it was uh, during 1857 that the Mughal Empire was completely wiped out. After he was, uh, Bahadur Shah II was arrested and sent to uh, Myanmar, Rangoon, which is current day Myanmar. Next, which of the following was the official court language during Akbar's reign? It was Persian. Uh, it's a very uh, standard bit, which you should be aware. 
Persian was the uh, official uh, language. And later, after the Mughals, when uh, Marathas became very prominent, they started using Sanskrit and Marathi, etc. And the local language has also flourished uh, during that period. So, which of the following was the largest manufacturing industry during the Mughal Empire? It was the textile. Uh, even right from ancient, we have seen that the spices and the textiles are some prominent imports uh, during, I mean, whether it is ancient India or medieval India. The textile industry of uh, this part of the world was quite famous. Uh, it used to be exported to almost uh, the Roman Empire, Persian Empire everywhere. So, which Mughal Emperor transferred the Mughal capital from Agra to Delhi? It is uh, Shah Jahan. Okay. So, uh, we have already seen uh, which uh, emperor had capital at which place. There is a table, I think it will come here also somewhere. If you look at the table and try to remember um, uh, which emperor had capital at which place. So, Shah Jahan shifted it from, transferred it uh, from Agra to Delhi. Remember that. And also remember the capitals of other emperors also. Well, like Akbar, where did he have, uh, where was the capital of Babur? I believe when Babur comes, it was in Lahore. And then for a period of time, it was Agra, then it was shifted to Delhi, like that. So, name the Rajput general who bravely fought the battle of Kanwa before losing to Babar. It was Rana Sangha. Okay. So, Raja, uh, Raja Man Singh and uh, Raja Jai Singh, they worked uh, for the Mughals. Okay. Raja Birbal, Raja Man Singh, Raja Todarmal, Thodar, Thodar, etc. They worked uh, under the Akbar. Uh, predominantly, they worked along with the Mughals. The main outlet for foreign trade during the Akbar's reign was the port of Surat. Because uh, Gujarat, okay, it was mainly you can see the Gujarat and Haryana and uh, etc. the northern part and the northwestern part was uh, more prominent during the Mughal Empire. And Surat, Surat was the main outlet for uh, foreign trade. So, who among the following was the chief administrator of the Sarkar in Mughal period? Okay, chief administrator of the Sarkar was Surda A. Sudur. Okay, we have already seen this uh, Patwal, Fauzdar, etc. It will come in other uh, thing. Wazir, Wazir is basically like the Prime Minister. Okay, and uh, sometimes if you see Divan in uh, say Maratha Empire or uh, somewhere else, Divan is also equal to Prime Minister. Okay, so Wazir is like Prime Minister. Surda A. Sudur is the administrator of the Sarka. Okay, which one of the following kingdoms was annexed to the Mughal Empire during the reign of Shah Jahan? Uh, Bijapur. Okay, keep that in mind. Sorry, it's uh, Ahmad Nagar. Okay, it's not Bijapur, it's uh, Ahmad Nagar. Okay, fine. Who was the ruler of medieval India who is created with the building of the Grand Truck Road? That is Sher Shah Suri. Uh, uh, during the reign of Humyun, when there was a, he launched the Battle of Kanals. At that time, it was ruled by Sher Shah Suri. And Sher Shah Suri was created with the building of the Grand Truck Road. So, during whose reign did William Hawkins visit the Mughal court to secure a right to trade in Mughal ports? We have already seen this. It was during the period of Jahangir that William Hawkins and Captain Thomas Rowe, okay, they have come and they have taken a pharma to build a uh, uh, factory, a trading uh, port at uh, Surat. But it was not built immediately. First, it was a temporary uh, port was built in uh, uh, Mosley Patnam, which is in current today Andhra Pradesh, Mosley Patnam. Then, Next, it was built in Surat. A permanent factory was built in Surat. These are something uh, common points which everyone knows you have to remember. Which of the following Mughal king reigned during the last scale of famine in Gujarat and Deccan? Okay. It was during the reign of Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan is also famous for Taj Mahal. Okay. So, consider the following statements with respect to Akbar. Akbar killed Hemu in the second battle of Panipat, 1556. The Battle of Panipat, there are three Battle of Panipat, which I uh, assume everybody knows. You have to know. First Battle of Panipat, 1526, in which uh, Babur defeats Ibrahim Lodi. Second Battle of Panipat is in 1550. Uh, first one, I said 1526, right? Second one is 1556, Akbar kills Hemu. Next, uh, third Battle of Panipat uh, is somewhere around uh, 1761, something like that. When it comes, we will see. So, these three battles you have to uh, remember, very important. They are some of the landmarks, uh, and uh, the third one will be somewhere with the Marathas, Marathas and the British, uh, something like that. Okay, so Akbar in 1564 abolished the Zizia tax imposed on the non-Muslims, which is true. 
we have already seen uh, multiple times akbar was religiously uh, very tolerant he also built the ibadat khana which is the, quite frequently asked which is a place a religious congregation place scholars from all religions come and discuss about uh, their religion so that is ibadat khana which is very very important from exam point of view ralph fitch was the first british to visit india he visited agra fatehpur sikri and varanasi during akbar's reign okay so that is also correct he visited during the akbar reign uh, but whether is the first uh, british uh, because we already seen that uh, thomas captain hawkins and thomas crow have come here what he meant was during the reign of akbar so from that point of view you can say c is also correct so i think uh, sorry ralph fitch was even before jahangir because jahangir comes later okay so is correct ralph fitch was the first british to visit india and he visited agra fatehpur sikri and varanasi during akbar's reign later captain hawkins and thomas crow they come uh, to establish trade to establish a trading port uh, in india next so consider the following statements with respect to jahangir okay jahangir is very important and his original name is uh nuruddin mohammad salim so you would have uh, all uh, read about this salim anarkali story is quite famous everyone knows that salim later when he becomes emperor he becomes uh, jahangir and he issued 24 farmans for the welfare of the public uh, that uh, we are not sure he visited ajmer darga for nine times and went ujjain to meet gosain jaduru a hindu saint okay that is correct so a and c are correct apart from this jahangir you have to remove uh, remember tobacco was introduced during jahangir period and he was famous for paintings okay the uh, patronage for painting has developed uh, uh, very well it has reached its peak during jahangir okay and uh, you should also remember those famous uh, painters a couple of names which will come later uh, and uh, the uh, nature of the painting is most a portrait painting so jahangir was such a good painter himself and he was such a good patron that he could see the painting and say who uh, the painting was uh, uh, done by which painter so he was uh, very famous for paintings and uh, the mughal art and architecture mughal painting music etc is also very important topic and also captain hawkins and thomas crow visited uh, during the period of jahangir so when you say jahangir you have to keep these things in mind and you also now have to remember he visited ajmer darga for nine times okay and he went to ujjain to meet gosain jadru okay hindu saint next which city is the famous panch mahal uh, panch mahal often described as wind catching tower situated it is in fatehpur sikri and when you say fatehpur sikri you, uh, the first name that has to come to your mind is akbar okay uh, you have to remember these things when you say taj mahal first thing that comes is shah jahan so fatehpur sikri means akbar uh, bulan darwaza fatehpur sikri etc etc so which sikh guru was killed by aurangzeb for not accepting islam as religion as we have already seen aurangzeb was known for uh, religious non tolerance so it was guru tej bahadur okay so you have to remember this guru tej bahadur was the sikh guru who was uh, killed during aurangzeb uh, persecuted by aurangzeb next so match the following uh, taj mahal everyone knows it's shah jahan very easy okay so first in these things if you are not well aware of everything at least if you can answer two or three at least you, if you can eliminate 50% the answer will automatically come so first thing taj mahal everyone knows it is shah jahan and bibi ka maqbara usually uh, most people know it is aurangzeb okay and agra fort agra fort is akbar fatehpur sikri uh, buland darwaza agra fort and all these things are akbar so obviously what is left is purana killa is sher shah okay so the option is one okay 1b 2c 3a and 4d so if you remember two uh, at least of all these things here in this case we know three so it is very easy bibi ka maqbara is aurangzeb we already seen a picture also and agra fort akbar uh, you can remember like it starts with a and it starts with a so akbar okay taj mahal is shah jahan and now you also remember purana killa is sher shah so it is when these type of questions are asked this uh, basic knowledge which you have developed through these questions you will be able to eliminate uh, very easily okay here you again have a maths the following again see uh, i don't know if you remember we have uh, already uh, jahangir 
Jahangir is Tujuki Jahangiri, right? Tujuki Jahangiri. And the Aini Akbari is Abul Fazal. So these two are, uh, and uh, Babur Nama by Babur, Akbar Nama by Akbar. So these are some basics. So now you can easily eliminate. You have 3A and 2C. Okay, 3A and 2C. So this is the answer. So one is D. <coughs> so Badoni has written Muntakab Ut Tawari. And 4B, Nizamuddin has written Tabakat E Akbari. So you can remember those things also. But minimum you can remember Abul Fazal is Aini Akbari. And especially when you are writing mains, uh, this statement somewhere you have to put it. You know, anything you write about Akbar or Akbar's uh, administration, uh, any revenue system, everything. You, it was mentioned in uh, Aini Akbari by Abul Fazal. So it is that standard. Fine. So, and Badawni is Muntakab Ut Tawarik. So, remember these things. And Tuzuki Jahangiri is by Jahangir. And also we have seen Bumiyan, Bumiyan Nama. Okay, in the starting questions we have seen. It was written his, uh, by his sister, Beldana Begum. Uh, we have seen that. Okay. The most important feature of the Mughal building was the dome. Okay. <coughs> so, if you look at the Mughal buildings, the Taj Mahal and etc. You see this uh, Indian Persian influence and the arch and dome is the most, uh, 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 the dome especially, the dome is more prominent and arch is also more prominent and the minarets etc. and uh, the Petra, uh, Petra Dura technique etc. etc. Those are very important when it comes to Mughal architecture. During the Mughal rule, the police duties in the districts were entrusted to the officials known as Fazda. So Mansabdari system, you have seen uh, the military ranking system. And Fazdar is the uh, police duty. So, which of the following Mughal emperors, okay, is created with a composition of Hindi songs, okay, Jahangir. When Akbar was born, Humayun was under the shelter of which of the following, okay, he was under the shelter of Raja of Amarkot. We saw that Humayun lost a war and had to uh, flee from this country. So, at that time, he, uh, he was under the shelter of Raja of Amarkot. Keep that in mind. Next, consider the following with regarding to Shah Jahan. Okay, Mughal architecture reached its peak during Shah Jahan. Definitely, we all know Taj Mahal. Two historical works that gave information about Shah Jahan are Paat Shah Nama written by Abdul Hamid Lahori and Shah Jahan Nama other by Inayat Khan. This is very important again. Keep that in mind. It's very important. Paat Shah Nama written by Abdul Hamid Lahori and Shah Jahan Nama other by Inayat Khan. Also, other things which we have seen, uh, Abul Fazal, Aini Akbari, Okay, Jahangir, Tujuki, Jahangiri, and uh, we also have uh, Minas Siraj, Abagati, Najiri, uh, all these things will come somewhere. When it comes, you try to remember. So, who was the urban ruler of India whose administrative system was emulated by the British? Okay, it is Sher Shah Suri. Uh, Sher Shah, uh, his administration was also very uh, famous. How uh, the land revenue is fixed one tenth of the crops for the last ten years, etc., etc. That will come in the mains. It's very important. All these things, Mansabdari system, the Mughal uh, revenue system, we have the Dasala system, uh, Nasak Kankut, and the types of lands, Polars, Paroti, Banjar, Chachar. All these things are very important. Uh, you have to go through those things. So, who among the following Mughal rulers banned music and dancing? Again, Aurangzeb. He was a very uh, uh, orthodox religious person, so dancing, music, uh, music, dancing, etc. is prohibited by Islam. Which of the following Englishman was honored by Jayangir with the title of Khan? William Hawkins, we have already seen uh, Mr. Uh, Captain Hawkins and uh, I mean Thomas Rowe and uh, Hawkins have visited uh, Jayangir and he was uh, given the title of Khan. So which popular Sufi Silsila tried to counteract the liberal religious policy of Akbar? It is the Naqshbandi. During the Bhakti and Sufi movement, we will see Silsila is the uh, basically the group, uh, the what you say, uh, the lineage of these uh, uh, Sufi saints. And uh, we have seen Chishti, Mohammedin uh, Chishti, Qadri, Shusharwadi, Naqshbandi. These are basically like surnames, uh, the name of the parampara, whatever it is. So Naqshbandi, okay, Naqshbandi is the name, I mean, the group of uh, Sufi uh, followers who try to counteract the liberal religious policy of Akbar because they wanted Islam to be uh, uh, established uh, sternly. They don't want uh, religious tolerance. They don't want uh, other religions to be uh, influencing the state. 
So Dara Shikov finally lost the war of succession to Aurangzeb in the battle of Samugad. Okay. Dara Shikov is the elder son of uh, Shah Jahan. Okay. Actually, he was supposed to become, but Aurangzeb, uh, he won the war of succession and uh, he imprisoned Shah Jahan also. And it was in the battle of Samugad that he uh, uh, killed uh, Dara Shikov. So, which among the following building built by Shah Jahan at Agra is similar in pattern to the uh, Saint Basil's Cathedral, okay, which is the Pearl Mass. It is similar to the Saint Basil's Cathedral, which is famous uh, somewhere in Europe, I think. I think Spain or something, this shape. So, Usta Disha is related to the design and the architecture of which of the following buildings in Mughal era, okay. It is related to Taj Mahal, even the Petra Dura technique and uh, all these things are very famous for Taj Mahal. And you have to remember about, uh, you have to write, if it is on the mains, you have to write about the technique, the engraving of uh, verses from Quran, the uh, where marble, uh, the, using precious stones, uh, floral patterns are designed, etc., the minarets, etc. You have to describe uh, those things. But from preliminary point of view, uh, you have to remember uh, what is what. So, Moti Masjid, was, Mo, uh, Moti Masjid was built in Red Fort by which of the following Mughal emperor? Okay, Aurangzeb. We have already seen Aurangzeb, Bibika Makabara. Okay. So, who among the following laid the foundation of Shalimar and Nishad Gardens in Kashmir? That is again Jahangir. And the Mughals were famous for gardens, the uh, uh, huge gardens with a waterfall, uh, I mean a water fountain uh, in the center, etc. So, the Bulan Darwaja at Fatehpur Sikri was built by Akbar in 1602 and he wanted to commemorate his conquest of Gujarat. Okay, Akbar is famous for the conquest of Gujarat and he built the Bulan Darwaja at Fatehpur Sikri. These are uh, very standard uh, statements and it is the explanation of the uh, above statement. So, both are uh, true and R is the correct explanation of A. So, which Mughal emperor built the city called Muskudabad, later popularly known as Mushidabad? It was Akbar. Okay, remember that Mushidabad was built by Akbar. So, what is Petra Dura? We have already discussed about many times. Flowers adorn the walls with precious stones. As we have already seen, if you look in Taj Mahal, if we have already seen in the PDF, uh, uh, in the marble, there is a floral design with precious stones. That is called the Petra Dura technique. <laughs> so, the, <coughs> so, the title of Hazrati E. Allah related to which one of the following rulers, Sher Shah Suri. So, couple of things we have uh, seen about uh, Sher Shah uh, dynasty also, which you have to remember. And uh, one of that is Hazrat E. Allah. Okay, the title, remember that. Which one of the following rulers first organized the Hajj pilgrimage at the expense of the state? You see Akbar, because he was religiously very tolerant. He, um, we have seen already, in 1564, he abolished the zizya on non-Muslims and also uh, that was different and uh, he was the first one to organize Hajj pilgrimage at the expense of the state. So, consider the following statements. Akbar had a friendly relation with the Rajputs, which is true. He also married uh, uh, Jodabai, who was a Rajput princess. So, Akbar introduced a new religion with the Rajputs. Okay, uh, I am not much aware about it. Akbar was a religious tolerant, yes. So, Akbar, Akbar was religious, very tolerant and Ibadat Khana, we have already seen. It is the uh, very important question, frequently asked. Ibadat Khana uh, is, uh, it was founded by Akbar, where people from all religions come and discuss, okay. And Akbar also built many uh, Gujarati style, Rajput style uh, buildings, okay, because we see uh, the Persian style buildings, the arch and dome, etc. in all of uh, Delhi Sultanate, all of the Mughals. Uh, but Akbar also built few uh, buildings which had the Rajput style also, because he, his wife uh, was also a Rajput princess. So, maybe he introduced a new religion with the Rajputs. At, at the end of the Akbar reign, uh, many of these the ulema who were the... Um, what you say, the Muslim uh, religious heads, they were not very happy with Akbar because uh, he was not strictly following the uh, policy of Islam. So, perhaps at that time, he was, it was rumored that he was uh, introducing a new religion and uh, um, yes, he did introduce a new religion and uh, Raja Birbal, uh, Dini Ilahi, I'm sorry. So, Dini Ilahi was, uh, you could say, the religion established by Akbar, which was not very popular, but uh, Raja Birbal, was uh, one of the famous person to take up that religion, okay, Dini Ilahi. It will also come somewhere. So, the last Deccan state annexed to the Mughal Empire by Aurangzeb was Bera. <coughs> so, 
So the Deccan uh, Sultanate, Bahamani Kingdom, it will come in that uh, the Sultanate of Golconda, Berar, Bijapur, Ahmadnagar, etc. There are five uh, uh, Deccan Sultanates. The Bahamani Kingdom disintegrates into the uh, five Deccan Sultanates. So the Battle of Chauza was fought between Humayun and Sher Shah Suri on 26th June in the year 1539. Okay, 1526 is Battle of uh, Panipat, which we have already seen. 1539 is it was Battle of Chosa. Okay, okay, uh, fought between Humayun and Sher Shah Suri. In the Battle of Kanauj, Humayun was defeated. Okay. <coughs> So under later Mughal emperors, the different groups of nobles were divided into major groups of factions, the Afghans and the Mongols. Okay, uh, we have seen it is not Afghans and Mongols, it is Afghans and Turks. Okay. It's not Mongols, Turks and Afghans. And we have already seen during the Delhi Sultanate, uh, the first three dynasties were Turks and the Lodhi dynasty was Afghan in origin. With the decline in the authority of the Mughal emperors, the governors of large provinces, Subedars, uh, the great Jamindars, etc., they consolidated their authority in different uh, parts of the subcontinent such as Avad, Bengal and Hyderabad. Definitely, whenever the, the central dispensation becomes weak, the individual uh, uh, small states, they start asserting their independence. It always happens. For example, if you see when the Maurya uh, dynasty uh, disintegrated, the Satavahanas, etc., etc., they started asserting uh, uh, their own. Uh, thing. And then when the Satavahanas declined, their uh, uh, feudatories, the Ikshavakus, they started uh, uh, their own dynasty. It always happens. When the central dynasty declines, the individual small, small uh, principalities, they start uh, setting their power. Okay. So, B is true, but A is false. So, this again match the following. Akbar Nama. Akbar Nama, we have already seen. Uh, it is written by Abul Fadl. Okay. And Jahangir Nama was written by Jahangir. And Pasha Nama, we have seen, was written by Abdul Hamid Lahori. Okay. Parsha Nama was written by Abdul Hamid Lahari. And we have already seen Shah Jahan Nama was written by Inayat Khan. Okay. And Akbar Nama was written by, I mean, Humyun Nama was written by Gulbadan Begum. Okay. Uh, who is the sister of Humyun? We have seen all these questions. So, who was the commander in chief of Rajput army besides Maharana Pratap in the Battle of Haldigati? Who was the commander in chief of the Rajput uh, army? Hakim Su. Okay, keep that in mind. And uh, the Battle of Haldi Gati is also important. Keep that in mind. So, what was the term used for the annually cultivated land during the Mughal period? Which is Pollaj. Okay, Pollaj is annually cult cultivated. Parodi, if it is left uh, uncultivated or fallow for one or two years, and for a more three to four years, then it is called Chachar. If it is left as uh, uncultivated for more than five years, then it is called Banjar. Okay, this is the class land classification during the Mughal period. This is also very important. So, which of the following Mughal ruler has a mosque on his name? Okay, Humayun in Fatehabad. Remember that. Who are the founder of the Char Bagh garden style in India? The Mughals. We already discussed. They had uh, the large uh, gardens with flowing, uh, central flowing water, which you can all see in the uh, Shah Jahan, I mean, the Taj Mahal also. So, who among the following granted Diwani to the East India Company? It's a very standard question. Shah Alam II. And after the Battle of Baksar, there, uh, once you cross this battle of Panipat and then you go into, uh, you are reaching the modern India stage, you have important battles like Battle of Plassey and Battle of uh, Baksar. Okay, 1757 is Battle of Plassey, 1764 is Battle of Baksar. So, those are two landmark, uh, very important uh, war, uh, battles. And in the Battle of Baksar, uh, the Treaty of Allahabad is signed and Shah Alam II was the uh, Mughal Emperor, but at that time Mughal Empire is not as large as we see now. By that time, the Marathas had occupied most of it, and the Mughal Empire was a very small uh, area. And also, the Nawab of Bengal, etc., it will all come in uh, uh, during the advent of European section. But remember this Shah Alam II was the one who granted the Diwani rights to East India Company, the Diwani rights of the Bengal region, the, the Bengal, Bihar, Odisha, etc. So, all these names will come in advent of Europeans. At that time, you have to go in depth about all these things. Shuja, Daula, Farooq, Siyar, etc. <coughs> so, in 1801, a subsidiary treaty was imposed on Oud. And Bahadur Shah Jafar died in Rangoon Jail in November 1862. Both are correct. Subsidiary alliance and uh, doctrine of lands, etc. You will get in uh, this uh, rise and consolidation of British Empire, advent of Europeans in those chapters. 
how the british slowly slowly started taking over uh, all the indian uh, uh, the individual principalities in india anyway so that is first a is correct it was uh, imposed on out and bahadurshah zafar is also uh, is basically bahadurshah 2 he died in rangoon jail and uh, it is after the 1857 revolt okay uh, in during the 1857 revolt everyone started going to bahadurshah 2 and they said because previously it was the mogal empire that was in power they asked him to become the emperor again he was already 82 years old so he was a very old person and after the revolt was crushed he was arrested and sent to rangoon jail in myanmar so the peak of throne okay was constructed during the reign of shah jahan which is quite famous which among the following post mogal ruler allowed marathas to collect sardesh mukhi and uh, uh, chauth and sardesh mukhi are two very important uh, taxes of the marathas we will see in maratha empire but here you have to remember it was bahadur shah one okay he allowed the marathas to collect uh, sardesh mukhi in dakkan which shows that the mogal empire was becoming quite weak and the, after the mogal empire becomes weak the marathas uh, literally they control almost whole of india we will see that in the maratha empire in detail <clears throat> so in 1717 which mogal emperor gave the english east india company a firma granting trade privileges in india it was farooq siyar so initially it was jahangir first uh, we have already seen captain hawkins and thomas row they visited jahangir and later on in 1717 uh, uh, the mogal emperor was farooq siyar it comes under the later moguls after aurangzeb Uh, the Mughal Empire starts declining, and Farooq Siyar is after Aurangzeb. Couple of uh, uh, years later, so Farooq Siyar appointed Abdullah Khan as Wazir of the Empire and Hussein Ali as Baki. Said brothers were armies of Hindustani group. Is uh, also correct. If you read uh, about, uh, I mean, the later Mughals actually after the decline of the Aurangzeb, all these will come: Shah Alam, Farooq Siyar, uh, etc., etc. The which Mughal Empire is known by the name of? rangila okay mohammad shah mohammad shah is also part of the later moguls and uh, we have already seen in the pdf who the uh, important moguls and the later moguls so all these people bahadur shah bahadur shah 1 2 farooq siyar jahangir shah mohammad shah they are all uh, they rule for very small periods and uh, nothing significant farooq siyar is important and uh, because uh, he persecuted uh, we have seen uh, uh, sikh guru tej bahadur etc so couple of these things and he granted the firma for uh, trading privileges etc so farooq siyar you have to remember others are uh, not that important at the time when nadir shah attacked delhi the mogul emperor was mohammad shah who was also known as rangila okay remember that we have already seen mogul empire declined during the aurangzeb and later uh, during the attack of nadir shah and again further declined after the 1857 revolt i mean it was completely wiped out after 1857 so was the mogal emperor when the battle of plassey battle of plassey i already said uh, 1757 okay battle of panipat 1526 uh, panipat 1 panipat 2 panipat 3 we have seen battle of plassey 1757 and battle of baksar 1764 those are very landmark uh, dates which everyone has to remember okay battle of plassey and battle of baksar so during the battle of plassey it was fought between the nawab of bengal and the east english com- uh, east indian company and uh, at that time the mogul emperor was alamgir ii from the east india company you have robert clive okay everyone is well aware of robert clive you would have read during your uh, school schooling days during the decline of the mogul empire the jats were organized into a political force by suraj mal okay just keep that in mind pandit raj jagannath was the poet laureate of which of the following rulers okay it was shah jahan okay the two regions surrendered by mogal emperor ahmad shah to appease the invader ahmad shah abdali were punjab and multan okay. i'll be going a little bit fast uh, because these are now later moguls and one liners and we have to finish it okay when the, when was the important firman issued by mogal emperor for the british trading privileges just now we have seen 1717 under farooq siyar the mogal emperor who awarded the title of raja to raja ramon rai is mohammad shah ii these are just one liners you have to remember and it will help in eliminating other questions before which important battle in india the babur declared the abolition of tamga tax battle of kanwa okay before battle of kanwa he declared the abolition of tamga tax which of the following works shows humayun's interest in astronomy and astrology kanun e humayuni fine we have seen this 
Tajikrat Ulwakayat, we have seen in some other question, right? Others we did not see. Which were the two of the great Mughals who wrote their own memories? We have already seen Babar and Jahangir. Jahangir Nama and Babar Nama. So, Akbar Nama was written by Abul Fazal. I mean, uh, any Akbari was written by Abul Fazal. Among the four sons of Shah Jahan, who is credited to have got translated Atharva Veda, which was Dara Shiko, who is the elder son of Shah Jahan. And he was killed by Aurangzeb. Which one of the following territories was not under the possession of the Afghans at the time of Akbar's accession? Okay, it was uh, Mewar was not under the, uh, and all the other are under Akbar's, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, it was under possession of the Afghans. And Akbar, uh, the conquest of Gujarat, in order to commemorate, he built the uh, Bulan Darwaja. The Ibadat Khana, I already told many times, very important, was built by which Mughal emperor? By Akbar. And uh, it was opposed by Naqshbandi. Okay, Naqshbandi was the order of the Sufi saints who uh, opposed the uh, religious tolerance policy of the Aurangzeb. Naqshbandi, keep that in mind. Under the Mughal rule of the, the chief minister was known as Diwan. Okay, Diwan, Wazir, etc. Akbar divided his empire into well defined provinces in 1602, they numbered 15. Okay, keep that in mind. Akbar had 15 provinces. The foreign traveller who visited India during the Mughal period and who left as an expert description of the peacock throne during Shah Jahan, we have seen, was Tavernier. John Hawkins and Thomas Rowe came during the period of Jahangir, okay? And later during uh, Tavernier came and he gave a description of the peacock throne. Who was in charge of the administration of the Parganas or Mahals? Sheikhdar. We have already seen in the administration, the Subhas headed by Subhadar and Sheikhdar, okay, Sheikhdar was of the Parganas or uh, further uh, Subha was on the like a state and further divided into Parganas etc. districts. So, district it was headed by Sheikhdar. Mansabdari system of the Mughals had its origin in Central Asia, it was not indigenous to India, it came from Central Asia. Who among the following Indian rulers was a contemporary of Akbar, okay, contemporary of Akbar is Rani Durgavati, the others are uh, not his contemporaries. So, Mughal Begum, whose name was written in all the Mughal firmans and inscribed on the coins, was Nur Jahan. Nur Jahan is the wife of Jahangir. Okay, and uh, she was ins uh, later inscribed on all Mughal firmans and uh, coins. The only Hindu courtier of Akbar who accepted Dini Ilahi. Sometime back, uh, I've already mentioned the new religion which they have at uh, uh, the uh, last phases of Akbar. He was not, uh, he created the Ibadat Khana and he used to get inputs from all religions. So, he created this new uh, religion which is called Dini Ilahi. Okay, and Birbal was the only Hindu who accepted uh, uh, that uh, Dini Ilahi. So, which was the second capital of Akbar, Fatehpur city. Okay, we have seen first one is uh, Agra. Okay, and during the time of Babur, it was Lahore. Next, it was uh, Agra for some time, Fatehpur city, and it was later transferred to Delhi. Which one of the following painters in Jahangir's court was not foreigner? Okay, Ustad Mansur. And it's important to remember uh, a few names of the painters during Jahangir because Jahangir was very popular for uh, painting. So, the most important work in the field of painting produced in the Mughal studies in the first few years of its existence is the Hamaza Nama. Okay, Tuti Nama is that spoken by parrot, etc., etc. So, just remember uh, these things. Fine. This is just some theory. So, so that's all about this uh, question and answers. You need not limit uh, to this. You can, I mean, you will find various sources, a uh, lot of books, etc. And I would suggest after going through the PDFs, uh, uh, the first two uh, lectures which we have put, try to buy some book, uh, be it the Lucent or uh, you have the Lucent general knowledge book or you have uh, some books in TMH, you have the Spectrum. So, any book is fine. Try to buy a book like that, read the chapters, okay, and go through these video lectures. Then you will get a depth and immediately answer these question and answers. And how many number of questions you can find? Just answer. The more number of questions you answer, you will get a better uh, grip on the topic. And when it comes to the exam, in during the exam, if all this will reflect. You will be able to answer the questions well, okay. So, practice well. Thank you for watching. Thank you.